Guys, I'm so excited to finally make this food tour video for you. So as you can see, beautiful humans, we are not in the studio. I got a new couch and it is a beautiful day outside. So I wanted to use the natural light in here in this beautiful living room and just kind of talk to you about this Maui food tour. I've compiled a list of my top 10 places that we went when we were in Maui in Hawaii. And it is coming from a long process, almost two years of planning, researching, reading reviews, doing all that stuff for those specific restaurants, narrowing it down to the area that we would be in for that specific day, everything like that. And some of them were actually on a whim. So I want to talk to you about the top 10 places in Maui that I recommend that you check out when you're there. Number 10 is Foodland. Now Foodland is actually a grocery store that is on the islands of um, Hawaii. And they actually are known to have some of the best pokey um, poke, I don't eat fish, I don't know this, but um, I had other things from Foodland snack-wise, fruit-wise, fresh food-wise, just as a grab-and-go option, and it was fantastic. The fruit is, I mean, obviously I had pineapple because it's Hawaii. And the Maui Gold is sold there. It is absolutely juicy, it's sweet. It, like, you know when you eat pineapple for the first time um, or anything kind of citrusy, you kind of like pucker up because it's a little bit sour. This did not do that at all. I could have eaten hundreds of pounds of this delicious stuff. So Foodland is a quick option if you were on the go, if you wanted to grab something for a picnic, that's also an option. Um, get a reusable cooler bag, stock up at Foodland of poke, of um, fresh fruit, of they have sandwiches, they have a ton of different stuff. It's a great price, it's a grocery store, but they have fresh food. A ton of different options for you to have that outing on the beach that day that you just want something quick, something easy, but also super delicious. Number nine is down the hatch breakfast. Now, this is a top 10 of delicious foods because nothing I had was bad. Um, nothing I had I would not recommend, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but I wanted to kind of rank them in a way that made it, maybe you would gauge if you wanted to go to specific things for specific meals. So we actually went down the hatch twice. So I wanted to put breakfast in a different category or a different ranking than dinner because I think it does rank differently. Again, this was a great breakfast. I had the, I have my notes here. I actually pulled up the menu. Um, breakfast at down the hatch, which is in Lahaina. It's in a place called The Wharf. It's right across from that big banyan tree down in downtown Lahaina. And if you are staying in Lahaina, obviously you can walk to this place, take a, um, a quick Uber, you can do all this stuff. But Down the Hatch serves breakfast from 7.30 to 10.30 every day. They have a ton of different options. Benedicts, they have bites, they have signature dishes. And I actually got chicken and waffles, which I love chicken and waffles. It is one of my favorite things of all time. I do live in North Carolina, so that makes sense. But uh, the chicken and waffles is southern fried chicken, waffles topped with homemade country gravy and maple syrup. Super simple, super classic. And mom actually got the banana bread mini French toast. It's homemade banana bread with lilikoi cream cheese. Now lilikoi is passion fruit, so it has that little bit of a citrusy tang as well as a sweetness. And it is pretty much standard in Hawaii and it came as a cream cheese on top of this banana bread. Now I wanna talk about the chicken and waffles first because that's what I had. The chicken and waffles, the chicken was perfectly moist. It was fried to perfection, but it wasn't a heavy breading. I really enjoyed it. It was crispy. And that um, gravy that they put on top, it wasn't as peppery as I would like my sausage gravy to be, but it was really, really good. The sausage wasn't overly chewy, which is a problem that people have with, um, with sausage gravy or sausage in general crumpled sausage. It was actually very, very good. I just wish it was more peppery, which is why I put it kind of less than dinner. So I did rank dinner differently, but the chicken and waffles was great. The waffles that I had there were small and they were crispy, but they were also super fluffy and light on the inside, which I really enjoyed. And of course it was a great outdoor atmosphere. And the banana bread that mom had, and ordered the Lilikoi cream cheese I could have done without. I wish it was something more sweet, uh, maybe more mapley with the banana. It didn't really mix well to me. It was very tangy. And, but the banana bread itself was really, really good. I wouldn't call it French toast. Um, it wasn't like, it didn't feel like it was done like a normal 
standard French toast. It wasn't crispy or anything. It just felt like banana bread. The banana bread was really, really good and absolutely delicious. And uh, I definitely think that breakfast, if you're staying in the Lahaina area and you want a place for breakfast, definitely try it out. It was so good, um, but it wasn't my favorite meal at Down the Hatch. Now the next one, number eight, is actually going to be another grocery store. It's the ABC store. The ABC store in Hawaii is not a liquor store like it is here in the continuous US. It is a convenience store, fresh food counter, made to order counter, souvenir shop, liquor store, beer. It's a very interesting place and it's like so cool. But they have a ton of grab and go options. The best pineapple that I had actually outside of like cutting it fresh from a fruit stand in Oahu. But on Maui, they had fresh fruit. Um, they had obviously more than pineapple. They had like mango, they had cantaloupe, they had a ton of other stuff, but they had sandwiches, they had sushi, they had masubi here. So if you wanted to try masubi at a price that was actually competitive with what it should be and not pay out the wazoo for masubi since it's literally spam and rice, this is the place to go. They have marinated spam here. They do it so good. They marinate it, they sear it, and then they put these herbs and then the sticky rice and they wrap it in the seaweed. Delicious. But the main thing that I got here was teriyaki chicken. Now the first day we got there, I felt like garbage, <laughs> uh, which is not funny, but I did not feel good. I don't know why it was like a migraine with like nausea and stuff like that. So we went to the ABC store to get food because we hadn't actually eaten a meal since we had left the East Coast because they're not serving meals on planes and nothing was open in the airports and it was a whole thing. But we went to the ABC store, we went to the fresh, like the made to order counter, which serves hot meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I got teriyaki chicken with rice. It was sticky rice, which I really enjoy sticky rice, especially when you put a great sauce on it. The sauce that I had on this, on this teriyaki chicken was perfectly sweet. It was perfectly savory and it was like sprinkled with sesame seeds and it was delicious. The chicken itself was a dark meat. When I bit into it, it was like a thigh um, and it was cooked perfectly. It wasn't heavy. Um, I think that it would be easily shareable from the portions that they give you. And it was definitely, I think it was like $13. Like it was not expensive at all for the amount of food that you got. You could also get different sides if you wanted. Um, they have mac salad, they have a lot of different things, but they also have a to go area, which has sandwiches, sushi, like I mentioned before, a ton of grab and go options that are absolutely delicious and worth stopping for. Number seven is Paella Fish Market. Now Paella Fish Market, that has a couple locations throughout the Maui area. They also have some places in Oahu. And we went here and I, we shared the shrimp fajitas. Now, when it came out, it was very odd looking. It's not fajitas like you get at like on the border. It was almost marinated shrimp in pico de gallo and the corn tortillas were handmade. You could definitely tell it was fresh tortillas, which I do appreciate. And the shrimp was like almost boiled in that mixture and it was very odd. Um, it, was del it was good. The shrimp was cooked nicely. It wasn't chewy. The flavors within the actual um, tomato portion of that. They serve it in a bowl, as you can see, and you scoop it into your taco. Um, the flavors in that, it was great. It was not spicy at all. Um, I think it could have done with a little bit of heat, but it was very uh, flavorful, savory, I think perfectly seasoned. And then they gave you like your rice, your lettuce and things like that to top your taco with. I thought that the tacos were made by the tortilla. I wish I would have gotten something else because people talk so highly of Paya Fish Market. I wish I would have gotten something fried or something that wasn't this because I'm so picky about uh, fish and picky about shrimp that this, even though it was good, I wouldn't recommend this specific dish. They do have um, bottled Coke, which I like so always get when <laughs> it's an option because it's so delicious and so good. So I did enjoy that part, but that's obviously, you can kind of get that, not necessarily specifically there, but I wish I could have gone back and gotten something else, even though this was good. Um, but I would still recommend going because I know that what I got made my recommendation a little bit lower, even though, I wish I would have gotten something else. So again, this is a 
you should go to all these places if you have the time. But I would definitely try something that isn't the shrimp fajitas. Number six is Leota's Kitchen and Pie Shop. The only reason that it's number six is because it I only got dessert there. They do have sandwiches and other things throughout the day, like cafe wise. And if I go back to Maui, I do wanna try those sandwiches because the menu looked absolutely wonderful. The I love a good sandwich. So this had pretty much anything you could have imagined and then some. It had mini pies and we got banana cream and we got a um, Oluwalu, oh, whatever uh, side town that was, I cannot pronounce it, um, lime pie. So it's almost like a key lime pie, but it's not key lime because it's not a key, it's a different kind of tree. And the key lime pie was almost too subtle and um, it was still good, light, airy, the crust was perfect, but it wasn't as flavorful of a lime as we would have enjoyed. But the banana cream, chef's kiss perfectly creamy the crust was so, like so well done and perfectly crunchy but also super like it gave and the flavor of the crust was great the banana part it was super banana -y, which i enjoy because i love bananas and the cream itself it was like smooth it was enough sweetness which is why i like banana cream pies they're not overly sweet they still have the natural sweetness of the banana without adding a ton of sugar, like a chocolate pie or even a baked um, fruit pie. This was so perfect and they are small, but they do pack a punch, so definitely shareable. We ate them over a few days in our Airbnb and I cannot wait to go back here to get more pie. Next up is Kilo's Kitchen food truck, which actually was our only option almost on our trip when we did the road to Hana, which that video uh, will be right here if you haven't seen it already. But we wanted a big meal because we were so hungry. The only thing we had had that day was banana bread, which um, honorable mention, Auntie's, uh, Auntie Sandy's banana bread shop. I wish we would have had more time to be able to go back here because they had um, so many options for lunch, but we were there so early that we just got banana bread. That banana bread, when I tell you that it's the best banana bread I've ever had, I it's a definite must if you're on the road to Hana. Definite must. Also, they have a ton of lunch options at Auntie Sandy's, but back to the subject of Kilo's. Kilo's was a food truck in Hana itself, right before you get to town, uh, kind of the end point of the road to Hana, obviously. And Kilo's had tables outside. They had a parking section, which was so refreshing after the road to Hana parking on the side of the road. They had their own area for parking and you just walked up. The service was fantastic. They were super nice there and they had traditional Hawaiian dishes. They had loco moco, they had a ton of stuff, but they also had chicken katsu. I love chicken katsu, um, not only because it's literally just fried chicken, but because the flavors of the katsu sauce itself are so savory and rich. And putting that on fried chicken and rice is so perfect. It's like the simplest comforting dish. So I got that and it was expensive because food truck food anyway is expensive. Um, from my experience here in North Carolina, we have a ton of food trucks here in Charlotte and you're paying for a good amount of like love being put into this. So you do pay a little bit more and you can tell with this. They also had um, Pog juice, which I really appreciated because it's Hawaii, it's great, I love it. And so I got the chicken katsu and it came with sticky rice and mac salad. So that's a staple of Hawaii is mac salad. So of course, if it comes with it, you get it. The um, chicken katsu was fried to perfection. It was absolutely delicious. It was a dark meat and it was still moist. It was crunchy. It was like perfectly thin. The katsu sauce itself was just so rich and beautiful and like it wasn't heavy at all. Um, but this dish was definitely shareable. It was absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite meals that we did and I'm so glad that we got that on the road to Hana because it was the perfect way to start our trip back to our Airbnb. All right, number four is Three's Bar and Grill. So this is actually a featured restaurant on diners, drive-ins and dives with Guy Fieri. And as you guys know, if you have been watching this channel for any amount of time, 
I have a love-hate relationship with Guy Fieri because I love Guy Fieri and the fact that he is a, my dream job, but also the fact that um, I can't watch him eat anything because it's so violent. But I love him, but I, I just can't. You know what I mean? Anyways, this place was recommended, obviously, from Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. So we went. It was actually in walking distance of our Airbnb, which was really nice. And we went there. We got the uh, beer can chicken, which was actually what Guy ate, or one of the dishes that Guy ate on the restaurant um, or on the show. And it did not disappoint. We actually got a, an appetizer of garlic noodles because it's like an Asian fusion Hawaiian. It's a very... The, the style of food that they have at this place is very much from a different places. So I got garlic noodles because I love noodles and they were cooked to perfection. And the flavor of the, it, I wish there would have been way more garlic, but everything about it was just a perfect appetizer to this meal because mom and I actually shared this because it was so large. It's almost half a chicken and it comes with Brussels sprouts and potatoes. So the potatoes were seasoned unlike anything I've ever had in my life. They were so salty in the best way and they were cooked, they were almost roasted, but not. It was just perfect. And it was a great way to cut the miso of the Brussels sprouts. I am a recent convert to Brussels sprouts because I liked them when I was a kid. And then when I kind of got a little bit older, I hated them. I don't like the way they smell. I think they smell like feet, but now I probably eat Brussels sprouts at least five to six times a week, um, if not more. And um, I, so we got Brussels sprouts at a bunch of different places over our trip, but this one, it was a miso roasted Brussels sprout. Absolutely delicious. They were a little crispy, um, like they weren't like steamed enough, but I didn't mind that at all. But the chicken was the star. It fell apart. It was so moist from obviously that beer can. And the flavors were unlike anything I've ever had. It was perfectly savory, salty, but also like just a rich and beautiful piece of chicken. It was absolutely delicious and definitely shareable. All right, we are in the top three. And number three is Sala Pepe Pizzeria and Cucina, which is in Lahaina as well. And this is an Italian place. And I mean, you can't go wrong with Italian, right? So we go here and we get carbonara because that is my staple dish of all time. It's my favorite dish that exists on this planet. Carbonara is it for me. I judge an Italian place off their carbonara. So we ordered it and it was a good amount. It wasn't like what you would get like at an Olive Garden because Olive Garden overserves people, but it was a good amount of pasta. I would say you could share it if you got another dish and you split two. Um, but this, the pancetta was so salty and perfect. The creaminess from the sauce, it was so good. The noodles were fresh al dente and cooked to perfection. The service there was fantastic. And this place you definitely need a reservation for because there were so many people waiting outside. It's a quaint little Italian place. It doesn't have a lot of tables due to social distancing right now, but there were locals coming in and someone said, <laughs> it was funny because someone was walking out and then someone was walking in at the same time and they leaned over and said, you gotta get this. And the guy said, we live here, we come here twice a week. <laughs> and um, so we were waiting outside and they had said that and I was like, oh, well, that's good to know. So um, they were meeting friends and that was super like encouraging to know that I made a good choice. And then when we got the food, of course we made a good choice. This is a traditional Italian restaurant where they don't bring you bread. Um, that's not a thing that, that normal Italian restaurants do. So um, that was kind of refreshing because that's just another thing you have to add on. But the carbonara was so Perfect. Is it my favorite carbonara I've ever had? Absolutely not, but it was a great find and it was still so good, super salty, delicious, cheesy. Ugh, I want it so bad right now. All right, number two is Monkey Pod. Now Monkey Pod is actually a chain in Hawaii that is run by a local family of like, they're Hawaiian, so they're run by a local family and they have locations on multiple islands. So we went to the one first in Wailea and it was phenomenal. I was pretty hesitant about going here because of how many 
the like the chain aspect of it all because I didn't want like I wanted to go to super local places but after I read more about Monkey Pot itself and and who runs it and the family and everything like that I was like okay we can go here so we went and they had some delicious food I'm actually going to read you exactly what I had so I have the menu pulled up right here and for the appetizer we got I could not pass up on this the pumpkin patch ravioli it's roasted local squash chevrolet cheese spinach, toasted walnut sage pesto. All of those things scream yes to me. Chevrolet cheese is one of my favorite cheeses because of the tanginess of it, but also the sweetness and it has some salt in it. It's just the perfect combination of a cheese, This like, and it's perfect for ravioli, the softness of it, everything. The spinach was so fresh that I basically just made a salad out of it because it was on top. And the toasted walnut sage pesto, that was probably, one of the best things I've ever had, period, in life. The flavors, the texture, um, it was perfect as a salad dressing, but it was perfect as a kind of a sauce for these handmade um, raviolis that were stuffed to perfection with the softest pumpkin squash I've ever had ever. And I don't even like pumpkin, so that tells you something. Also, um, I got this twice, like, I so I ate it, that time and then I also got it again and I got two of them as my meal um, later because it's only five raviolis. And I got it a couple days later, we went and picked it up because I had to have it again because it was so delicious. And then I also had the Kahlua pork and pineapple uh, flatbread pizza. It was about a 10 inch pizza and it's definitely shareable obviously, but I also got the, um, the waiter to describe it to me and, and tell me if it was hot or not because it does have jalapenos on it. I'll read you the, the thing, the description. It's Kahlua pork, which was cooked to perfection, super fall apart and like just great. Uh, mac nut pesto, which is macadamia nut pesto. Instead of using pine nuts, you use macadamia nuts. Roasted pineapple, and I'm a full component and advocate for pineapple is belongs on pizza. Let me know in the comments if you're that as well, but if it's in the right pizza, 100%, put it on the pizza. Um, and it does have fresh jalapeno on it. And the jalapeno did have seeds, so it is hot. If you don't want that, they will take it off for you. It's made fresh farm to table, this place. And it was so delicious. The crust was cooked to perfection and the pork with the, the pesto and the pineapple all married together was just the perfect combination of flavor and the crust even made it better. The cheese was fresh. It was just so good. And I highly recommend getting that. But more importantly, I highly recommend getting those pumpkin raviolis. All right, we have made it to number one, which is down the hatch for lunch or dinner. They have the same menu, which is why I'm lumping them together, but we ate there for lunch and I cannot recommend this place enough. It was fantastic. So as I mentioned, it's in the wharf in Lahaina, which is across from that big banyan tree in that shopping area. So there's like shops, there's um, retail stores, there's um, like massage or nail salons and things like that, all within that area. And they have a, some restaurants all in that area as well, coffee shops, things like that. But you go down the stairs on the right-hand side if you're looking at the wharf and there's down the hatch. They have a little teeny shop if you wanted like t-shirts, they have stickers, they have cups, they have a ton of different stuff and you walk up to the counter and you order. They give you a carafe of water and then they also give you any drinks that you wanted at that time and they give you a number and you go and find a table. It is all outdoor seating unless you find seating at the bar, which is still outdoors, but you don't have to wait for an actual table. They will serve you the full menu at the bar as well as the bar menu. So they do have alcoholic beverages as well, but we got so much food here because I wanted, I could not decide on something. So I wanted to read you what we got. Um, they have a signature sauce called Lava Lava Sauce. It is, you can buy it by the jar. It is like their signature sauce, which is a house-made spicy tangy aioli. And let me tell you, it's not that spicy, but it is so good. And it's perf it's perfection. But um, to start off with, we got the Lava Lava Shrimp, which is crispy shrimp, Lava Lava Sauce, green onions, and pickled red onion. And you can actually make that a meal by adding rice and veggies. So it's almost like a bowl, um, like an Asian fusion kind of um, bowl in a way. And that would have been great if we had gone back, which I highly recommend if you are in Lahaina and you don't really care about eating in multiple places, eat here multiple places because you cannot go wrong. 
Um, the Lava Lava shrimp, I asked her because I'm so picky, as I mentioned before, about shrimp. I don't want huge prawns. Like I, it, the texture of it freaks me out. So I don't want that. So I asked her how big they were and she told me they were calabash size, which is my preferred size of shrimp. So I just pop it in my mouth, chew it, it's perfect, let's go. Um, and they were fried, crispy to perfection. They came in almost a martini glass and the pickle red onions were not overpowering at all. The green onions were a nice crunch on top of the crunch that was already there. So they deep fry them, season obviously everything like that. And then they toss them almost like chicken wings in this lava lava sauce. And it is so, like I could probably drink it. It's absolutely delicious. And on this dish was perfection. And I highly recommend getting the lava lava shrimp. But we also got the um, Brussels sprouts, which had bacon in it as well. It's fried or grilled uh, Brussels sprouts, bacon, brown sugar, and a balsamic glaze. Now I had never had fried Brussels sprouts. As you, I mentioned before, I'm a recent convert to Brussels sprouts. So fried Brussels sprouts I'd never had before. And bacon, of course, hello, bacon is delicious. Who doesn't like bacon? And brown sugar makes everything delicious and balsamic is fantastic. So you can't go wrong, right? So I told her, I asked her if she, which one she preferred when she was taking my order. And she said fried. So I said, yes, please. And those came in um, a small dish as well. Um, almost a martini glass, maybe a stainless steel one. If I remember correctly, you'll see it here. And they were fried to perfection. It was not a heavy breading. So it wasn't like, fried chicken. It was almost flash fried in a way um, with breading on it. It wasn't heavy. It was seasoned perfectly. The bacon was perfect. It was almost like big chunks of fried, like it was just everything married together so well in that dish. And I highly recommend that. But I got the lava lava spicy chicken sandwich. It's fried chicken, melted cheese, lava lava sauce, ranch, Hawaiian sweet bread, and it comes with a side of double battered fries. Now I'm a huge component and lover of double battered fries. The texture is perfect. They're light, airy and crispy and everything about them is fantastic. And these lived up to that. I, they were just so, so, so good. The sandwich, the fried chicken was cooked perfectly. And when I say perfectly, I really mean that. And I'm from North Carolina, so I know what fried chicken is supposed to be. Um, it was cooked fantastic. The flavor was great. The cheese and the ranch and the lava together, I could not tell any of them apart, like looking at it. It was all just so well done and perfectly put on this sandwich. And then on top of the crispy Hawaiian sweet bread, like it was just a perfect sandwich. And I wish I would have been able to eat it all because it was just that good. I cannot recommend down the hatch for lunch or dinner more. Um, and that, is it, that's my number one, down the hatch for lunch or dinner. All right guys, that is my top 10 for where you should check out in Maui to eat if you are a foodie or if you just like food or if you are looking to do something adventurous or just looking for recommendations. I hope this was helpful because I know there are a ton of videos like this on YouTube that you could have chosen to watch and I'm glad you were here to choose to watch this one because I hope this helps you in your planning. I hope this helps you be more adventurous or to eat great food and to have um, a memorable meal with your family or with your friends on this vacation. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and turn on the bell notification uh, because you won't miss anything if you do that. Also, let me know in the comments if you have been to Maui and what your favorite restaurant is if I mentioned it or if I need to add something to my list for when I go back, that would be great. Also, if you are going to Maui, tell me if any of these are on your list to check out and let me know if you wanted to add any to this, that this was helpful to you. I so appreciate you guys watching again. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you on the next one. Let's go to Oahu, okay? Until then, be beautiful humans. Bye.